Hey everybody, welcome back to your Game of Thrones recaps. Today we're going to take a look back at what happened in the very last episode, Season 4, Episode 10, The Children. Let's get right to it. We start this week in Marine, where Danny is finally able to have a good time without Sir Jorah constantly texting her. But the good times come to a screeching halt when she holds court. First up, a guy who actually wants to be sold back into slavery. It seems that Danny's grand liberation plan isn't working out for those that she liberated. Left without a choice, she allows him to sign a one-year deal to go back to work for his former master with no pay and regular beatings. But, you know, at least he's not a slave anymore. She then sees a man who brought her a gift. A horrible, horrible gift. It seems that Drogon's eyesight needs to be checked as he thought his daughter was a goat. Since her delinquent child Drogon can't be found anywhere, Daddy punishes her well-behaved children by locking them in the dark, just like any mom would do. Up north, accomplished diplomat Jon Snow meets with Mance Raider to try and end the war with the wildlings by secretly trying to kill him. When that doesn't work, John manages to get the wildlings to surrender by... Well, you know, he doesn't do anything. Instead, Stannis and Davos and thousands of CGI soldiers show up out of nowhere, cutting down any wildling that tries to protect themselves from the sheer confusion. Stannis' loan from the Iron Bank finally came through, allowing him to buy a ton of soldiers and horses so that he could invade a group of hippies that never actually posed a threat to anyone. Rule number one of leadership. Beat up the weakest guy around so everyone thinks you're strong. Ooh, bonus points if someone else already did most of the work for you. Inside Castle Black, Stannis watches as the wildlings burn their dead. And for the first time ever, Stannis manages a half-smile. Happy that he has finally found people who understand him. What they don't understand is basic fire safety, as they made their giant people-fueled bonfire about ten feet away from a mostly wooden castle. John then goes to see Tormund Giantsbane, who asks John to give Ygrette a proper wildling burial on the other side of the wall. Instead of doing the smart thing and just dumping her body off the top, John ventures into the woods alone and makes a giant, attention catching bonfire, completely forgetting the fact that there is an entire race of monsters just a few miles away. Meanwhile, somewhere else north of the Wall, Bran and friends have finally reached the tree that was promised, the same one from Jojen's Season 5 preview DVD. As they approach the tree, they're attacked by a skeleton army. Bran hodors up, but still can't kill all the monsters. And just when it seems all hope is lost, a small child appears with a fire flower, blasting all the skeletons, allowing them to escape. Wait, 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 wait. Everyone knows fireballs don't work on skeletons. Only the cape. No one understands! As Bran, Hodor, and Mirror follow the kid into the tree, Jojen is tragically killed by a skeleton monster. Overcome with grief, no one knows what to do, as Jojen still has the Season 5 DVD. Deciding to walk deeper into the tree, they find an old man sitting amongst the branches, who tells Bran that he'll never be able to walk again, but he will be able to fly. And suddenly, this becomes a completely different show. Meanwhile, in the Vale, Podrick somehow manages to lose their horses because... Oh, baby. Just oh. After walking for a long time in the most vast and empty area on the continent, Brienne happens upon the one person she was looking for because, uh, well, you know, why not? Brienne tells Arya that she swore an oath to Arya's mom to protect her, and we all saw how that turned out, so Arya should definitely go with her. The Hound wisely questions Brienne's intentions, as she's holding a gold sword that came from the Lannisters. But before Brienne can tell him, no, this, uh, this used to be her dad's before they killed him and, and gave it to me, the Hound starts to reenact the fight scene from They Live. After the battle, Brienne manages to knock the Hound off a cliff. Then she tries to find Arya for about two minutes, not bothering to look behind any rocks. Dying, the Hound begs Arya to kill him, telling her she can finally cross him off her list. But instead of killing him, Arya steals his gold and runs away, leaving him to die alone 
in agony. Why? Because Arya is a jerk. A jerk with a magic coin, as she soon finds out, when she shows it to a captain whose ship is bound for Bravos, The magic land where one coin makes you rich, but kings are given variable rate high interest loans. Finally, in King's Landing, Cersei orders Quyburn to do whatever it takes to save the mountain from dying. Quyburn says he has just the thing and then pulls out a comically oversized needle that he got from Clown College, the thing he went to after he got kicked out of Maester School. Later, as Tyrion awaits his execution, he is saved by Jaime, who tells him that Varys has arranged for him to get out of the country. Excited, Tyrion goes to tell his dad the good news, but finds Shay in Tywin's bedroom instead. Overcome with rage, Tyrion strangles Shay, then decides to grab a crossbow and find Tywin, which he does, while Tywin is pooping. Tywin wants to talk it out, but Tyrion has had enough of his crap and kills him forever. Arya finds out her coin is counterfeit. Dean Stannis tries to stop the wildlings from throwing a huge kegger. Danny grants someone an exciting land variance to build a shed. Tyrion goes to live with his cousin in Chicago. Quyburn robocops the mountain and Bran waits for book six to go on sale so he can find out what to do next. Thank you so much for watching this Game of Thrones episode recap. Today was season four, episode 10, The Children. Let's get ready for season five. Which he does. Tywin is pooping. <laughs>